episode of Chatty Broads with Becca and Jess. Okay. So, Becca, I have a question <laughs> for you. Do you think Brendan or Chris was the person that maybe Wells was talking about that was getting the Bachelor edit on <laughs> Bachelor in Paradise? I have, to, I have to say probably Brendan. You probably, know, he really came out looking uh, like a shining star. Yeah, I feel like after watching that, it was like, oh, this is the Bachelor edit they so were all like, talking who, who's about. Who's going to be the Bachelor? <laughs> it's up in the air between Brendan and Greg. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> one or the other. Yeah. <sighs> Broads, <laughs> before we came in to record, I looked at Becca and I said, I don't want to talk about these episodes. <laughs> they're, they're awful. <laughs> I cannot name like one good thing that came out. I can. I can name like two good the, things yeah, that there came were, out there of were, the There were a couple moments and I do want to focus on some of those good <laughs> things. But watching this, I just, I was so the anxiety watching both episodes was so was so high it was like having i was having to pause i was having to pause to like kind of recalibrate and then all of the social media stuff i i just i couldn't it was too it was too much you know what's crazy too that i was reflecting on is there's only like one couple that's actually like solid. And even that was sort of up in the air this week. And it's Joe and Serena. Yes. Well, yeah. Okay. So, so Joe and Serena, I yeah. feel like Riley and Marissa Which have we been haven't really seen. solid, but we're not seeing it. And, and I then we saw Marissa see... break down and then you're just like, okay, I can't say for certain this is going to work right. out. Though we saw Riley, you know, right. he was not like no. canoodling or no. anything of <laughs> no. the sort. In fact, no. if anything, you know, he was definitely more focused on Chris. Uh, <laughs> but... I, I'm like, can we just see a little like I understand that this show is about drama, but also Bachelor in Paradise is what I used to enjoy about Bachelor in Paradise is that it was more lighthearted yeah. than The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. It was like it's more silly. You have the intros and it was just so intense. This is like Lord of the Flies. This is not Bachelor in Paradise anymore. It feels like they're abandoned yes. on this island. Yes. Unhinged, yes. unmoored. And 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 and. We were talking earlier, too, where it's like when we're watching the episodes, specifically these last two, I'm like, what are we not seeing? Because I feel like there are so many things missing out of all of these conversations that we're not privy to. And I can't imagine being one of the contestants watching this these episodes and being like, you all don't know all. All of the stuff that we knew or that was going down. Well, and yeah. yet I can't say anything because yeah. I'm under contract. I was DMing a couple people who were like, yeah, you're not like th this is you're not seeing the full picture at all. No, no. And I this was the other thing, too. <sighs> I want to make this very clear before I say this. Tell me. And we'll get into this. Tell but me. what. The way Brendan treated Natasha was so absolutely terrible. It was so despicable to watch on screen. Ugh. Terrible. So I want to make that clear. Yeah. That's how I feel. But then when I went on social media, what was going down on photos that he posted with his nieces and nephews. Craziness. The comments that people were saying, calling him a predator. I mean, it was like... Absurd. I, I, I couldn't even... And again, this is, this is coming from... I'm saying this as someone who I was like, this person, what he did was absolutely terrible. Yeah. He 1,000% he deserves repercussions for his sure. actions. And when I was watching, let me tell you this, when I was watching his follower account go down like crazy and watching watching Natasha skyrocket, I was like his went down yeah. by like what 40,000 followers. I think maybe I think like maybe that. more. It's probably been more at this point. Watching the Natasha skyrocket, I was like, "Yes, yes. Into it. Yes, yeah. support Natasha, support her and unfollow Brendan." Yeah. But I was seeing some people Oh my god, his is really dipped so far. It's like what is he at like two what is he's he at now, now? He, he's dipped even further he's now 276 okay he was at like th he was at like 289 like 298 last then, time i looked at it yeah and, like, and beforehand he was like high 300s and we you know you and i this whole podcast is we 
we narrate the actions. And it's important to, I think, have these conversations, especially when people do something like what Brendan did, where it's like, no, we have to have these conversations. This is a good way to talk about like real life shit. Yeah. But it is still a TV show. Yeah. So unfollow. But if you do, when you're posting these like horrific things under a photo of, with that has children in it. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was someone, um, uh, Stephen Lovegrove, who's like a friend with like Katie and like all those Bachelor people. He did post something that I saw that he was like, just a reminder too, like when you actually are commenting, you're engaging, which does help someone's algorithm. Mm. So if you really have a problem with someone, quietly unfollow. Mm-hmm. That's that's mm-hmm. the impact. Yeah. Not then sending horrific messages yeah. to somebody. Yeah. Support Natasha. Yeah. Send her love. It's just uh, don't even know where to begin. No, that's kind of that's kind of how I feel. <laughs> It was just all uh, so intense and negative. And then seeing then the social media, like it was just, it was. Yeah, I mean, the social media is what it is. It's like always been that way, though, you know, it's like from. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's always been that way. The, 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 The people who aren't villains get crazy ass shit. Oh, I know. The people who are, it's like. Best thing I could say to anyone on the show is just like get the fuck off your get out of your comments and DMs. Just don't yeah. look. And Otherwise, if you did something, you are going to be unwell. Yeah, and if you did something on the show that that you know deserves repercussion, when you if you hurt someone, yeah, that's something then that you have to live with and you yeah. have to take accountability yeah. of. But also, well, even Kendall was posting. She's just like, I'm not engaging in the comments. I'm not responding. Like, just gotta leave it be. Mm-hmm. You know, I was happy that let's start with that. There was some distraction about the Kendall thing, though, because I was worried that Kendall was going to um, get destroyed on the show. Let's let's. Yeah, it didn't go that bad. No, no. But I think it probably would have been way more of a drama. Yeah. And a thing if everything didn't implode like what we saw. Shall we start with Joe? Yeah, Kendall let's internet? get into Okay. Yeah, yeah let's get into um, it. I mean, look, what was a bit unclear to me was I couldn't quite figure out why Kendall was there. She said, no. And I think that some of that does have to do with editing. Um, sure. Because we even heard some editing, like when she was coming in, sort of like, you know, I'm here for Joe, whatever. But then she also said in their conversation, like, I'm here to date. And mm-hmm. then it sort of sounded like at the beginning of the conversation, like, I was just confused. I think Joe was also, I mean, Joe seemed very confused. Then, yeah. And then when he talked to Serena, he even said, he was like, I don't, she's saying that she, like, misses me and, like, kind of, like, still cares about me. But then she also wants closure. So like, what is she here for? What was also confusing and interesting was the different things Joe was saying. To, I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't doing anything wrong, but he no. was saying some different things to different people. Yes. Like he was telling Serena, you know, um, it's over, it's done. And then he's, you know, talking to Riley or whoever. He's like, I just don't know. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> okay, oh well, <laughs> you just told Serena that you were going to be completely honest and transparent with her. So what is it, Joe? I mean, I didn't think it was anything really bad. I think, I think no. that he, uh, um, I think that he was ultimately honest, but I was still just kind of like, you seem a little more conflicted than you might have <laughs> thought you were going to be. You're like, I think it's a little bit of a moment by moment <laughs> situation for you, where like one moment when you're looking at Serena, you're like, no, I'm done. I'm over but then her. when you see Kendall walk by, it's a little bit like, oh god, I don't know. Like, there's a pang. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> which is natural. I yeah. mean, this is like an ex that you cared about, like. Wh- Starting off this episode with that was really just a way to start off this damn episode because that conversation oh, was, so, was hard. so hard to watch because it was so real. Yeah. I mean, because it was like these are it two people who have been in a relationship for two years. A real relationship. A real relationship. Yeah. Not like just a couple weeks. <laughs> no. This is like living together. Yeah. Like planning a life together kind of real shit. shit. And then you're having these moments where we're getting like the little <sighs> like the little like nuggets of like, well, 
you know, I said I wasn't going to move for a guy. And then he's like, well, uh, she's like, and I, you know, there's this closure piece. And then he's like, yeah, but I came, you're not saying everything. I came four months later and tried to make it work. And she's like, yeah, but you were just saying that you were trying to get me to move to Chicago. Let's be honest. And he's like, well, if you would have tried me, oh! I mean, it was just like, oh my God. <gasps> Well, and I'm, I'm going to be hanging out with Kendall in a couple weeks. And I'm interested to just see her, her side of it. I'm not going to be like sharing it on here unless she explicitly says I can, yeah. obviously. But, um, you know, I I was kind of like, when he said, you know, I, sh- I shouldn't have just been a man. Like, I wasn't just a man to you. when she was like, like saying, you know, I don't want to move for a man uh-huh. or whatever. And I was like, <gasps> oh. uh-huh. it was... <sighs> Just spiraling me back into like pre like old conversations with like, you know, a boyfriend or whatever, because it just felt it was like they were saying they didn't break up because they weren't in love anymore. And that is so real. There wasn't in the situation like there isn't a quote unquote bad guy. No. It's like it's it's just life. It's I, two people existing. I do. I was curious. Though. I'm like, why couldn't she have just tried it? Like, what if it was even like, yeah, well, I'll try moving there for like a year or two or like, well, can't we do? I mean, they have flexible jobs. Can't we do like si- we'll spend the summer in Chicago yeah, and spend winters know. in L.A.? Like, I don't know. Maybe it was just like I I'm not. Maybe Kendall has seen friends like she was saying. I said yeah. I wasn't going to move for a man. It's like, you know, when you observe like friends yeah. in your life who but God, if he's the love of your fucking life, aren't you yeah. going to at least try? Like he was saying, I was kind of like, I get where you're coming from, my guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. By the way, uh, last week we were talking about Serena. It's like, what about Serena and Joe? Like she lives in Toronto. Yeah. Apparently it's like a five hour drive. Oh. I had no idea. Me I'm- and geography. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, well. <laughs> oh, so it's not too bad of, wow. of, a, of I a thing. I mean, I had no idea about that. No concept. <laughs> I was like, that's got to be at least a 12-hour plane ride. I'm thinking right? <laughs> like my brain with geography, you're right. I'm thinking like Massachusetts and like Vancouver, <laughs> like opposite end of the country. I'm just like, wow, you guys, you might as well be on the other side of the world from each other. So I don't know what you guys are talking about right now. Really? It's only five hour drive? Yeah, it's something like a five or eight hour. It's It, it, it was just, it was a short a, plane ride. It was a short plane ride and not a long drive. It was like a from here to Vegas type energy. That's so funny. Which yeah, I do every it. weekend. <laughs> hey. <It's a> joke. <laughs> you know me. Palm Springs back. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Easily done. Easily done. No problem. Oh man. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I did think I, I liked though that Joe was being honest with himself and wasn't just yeah. shutting it down. And so I appreciated how he with Serena he was like you know, I, 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 and I didn't feel like he was trying to like have his cake and eat it too. He was like, I get it. If you're like, if you don't want to like wait around and see if yeah. I can figure He's shit like, out. He's like, I get if it's, this is too uncomfortable yeah. for you because the reality is, is like, he's not going to just write Kendall off right. completely. It's not, again, it, there's not like a bad guy in the situation. It was like, they care about each other. They right. still care about each other. He was saying though, he's like, I don't think I'm in love with her anymore. Mm. He said, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm, I, I just kept thinking about being Kendall and having to, like, watch it at home. She's not. Good. <laughs> that, my friends, is wisdom. <laughs> and that is wisdom. It's like, why subject yourself to that? Yeah. You already had to deal with the pain on the beach. I'm like, I'm not watching anything. Yeah. I don't think if I was ever, if I was on the show, I would watch ever. Like, if I was, like, proper on The Bachelor. You probably would. You can't help it. You also want to see yeah. that... You want to see that relationship play out on screen, too. Like, sure. if you had any ounce of investment, you're like... You want to yeah. see it back, you know? You're curious. I should say this. I wouldn't watch if I was getting a villain edit. I couldn't bring oh. myself to watch it. I would just be like, I am going to... I'm already getting destroyed online. I will now... I will then personally be like i'm like my harshest critic i'm like i will be just picking apart everything but yeah that would be so difficult it'd be so difficult but when okay so when though joe talked to serena i mean serena holy smokes i know she was so mature about it i i I was like girls flipping a lid about their (laughs) man's leaving for like 30 minutes yeah i'm like this, this one this one has like his proper ex came on like where they met in the same exact scenario that you are now meeting this guy that you are super into and the level in which 
she god i mean she is just absolutely phenomenal she is she has proven herself in terms of maturity so when people are talking about that age gap i'm like i I think they seem really well matched with emotional maturity i think they seem they seem great together and she if i was serena honestly like this is (laughs) i would have been so so fucking petty like i know i would have been pissed too I wish, I wish that I would have been able to handle it like Serena, but for, I know myself and I know I would have played, now I wouldn't have been like having a meltdown, I would have gone full ice. Just like, that's fine. Yeah, I would have been like, I don't really care. Um, (laughs) Like, yeah, you and I are like goofing around, but like, I mean, yeah, have your conversation. Like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do my thing. When you have a second and want to catch up and hang out, maybe have a drink by the bar, like, sure, I'll do that. I would have been... talk to your ex-girlfriend. Yeah, I get it. I mean, listen, you you two, you guys have a lot to catch up on. Like, She's gorgeous. I'll never have abs like that, you know? <laughs> I would have done that, that shit <laughs> and just acted like I'm like, does completely unbothered. Where inside I would have been like sobbing, but just full ice queen on the outside. Oh, God, I don't know how to handle it. I think I would probably cry. I think I would probably immediately when they're talking just be like, yeah because i mean but she the way that she then there were a few things that that she but was he saying also said in dinners before and stuff he was like we're done it's over like and she because she had asked what if she was to come and he's like we're done it's not, you know it's whatever sure <laughs> but i would have been a little pissed if he came back and was like i was like i don't well i'm trying to trying to process this i'd be like what about when we had our <laughs> wrestling date what about when we were in the ring eating and you told me that it's like definitely done? What are what about that? But that's kind of the energy that I feel like she gave him. That's why I love mm. the way she handled it. She wasn't like, oh, no, I totally get right. it. Right. And she wasn't She was kind of like, what's going on? Yeah. Like she was very communicative. Right. And she was just sort very of like, okay, well, that sucks. But yeah. And she's like, when she's saying, uh, what was it exactly? Oh, when she was saying like, hey, I need, if we're going to do this, if there are any changes in how you feel, like you need to tell me. Yes, I thought that was so smart. Direct communication. Yes. What she's telling him exactly what she needs. Mm-hmm. And it was like, wow, wow, wow. Mm-hmm. Bravo. Yeah. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. And I think that it's, it is obvious there's a lot more missing because after this, we don't see any more conversations between Joe and Kendall. And they're like sitting next to each other at the dinner table. Kendall's like, yeah. looks like she's hoping for a date card, whatever. And I'm like, okay, so this is over. This I, is, this ship has sailed, it seems like. It oh, seems wait, no. But then I forgot the previous. Yeah. Because as of right now, it was like, oh, I was also thinking, uh, I'm like, wow. I mean, I feel like Kendall. Not saying that she's not going to in this next episode, but I feel like she's handling it superbly as well. Yeah. Like she's seeing her ex with another woman I don't on the think beach. She's really seen him yet with her. I just am kind of like, how do you not? Like, right. is it that big? I feel like everyone kind of congregates in like right. the same well, Joe's few areas. Been busy though, which we're gonna talk about later in the episode. Joe, Joe didn't have a lot of time for Serena. Listen, these couple episodes. <laughs> listen, Joe, you better start pipe down. You listen, Joe, you better start <laughs> paying attention to the reason why you're here because I think you're losing track a smidgy about that it's about love and somehow you oh have got God. yourself caught up in trying to make sure that people are here under the right rules. Uh, there are rules to this. We cannot break the rule. I mean, it was just like, what in God's name is going on right now? Oh, this my. these this fourth wall that's breaking somehow with like the rules the, literally I think a, uh, Natasha said yeah Natasha said ABC in the episode I was like this is too much for me <laughs> <laughs> the fourth wall has been broken too much <laughs> I, I'm like you guys are talking about followers you're talking about ABC <laughs> like I am now the I am out of the magic like I am no longer part of the fantasy. The no, the set is collapsing around yes. us. <laughs> You've realized that you are this is a Truman show moment and you realize there are cameras there. <sighs> and I'm having all of these moments when they're having these conversations and I'm like, "Oh, there are camera crews and boom yeah. mics yeah. all over the place." And yeah. now I'm thinking about that. Well, apparently Brendan and Piper didn't think there were boom mics everywhere. Brendan really thinking he's going to get away with like scratching his mic. <laughs> 
I'm like, honey, you're a foot away from her microphone. I, I'm, I will never get over, I will never get over the conversation of, of being miked in paradise and ha- and talking about followers. <laughs> like you're dumber than a box of rocks. I, I was so <laughs> shaken up. I was so shaken up. Idiots. <laughs> We've never seen anything like that ever. Like Idiots. like ever. Groundbreaking and not a good way. Again, ruining the fantasy. <laughs> oh my god, let's take a break before yeah. we uh... Oh my gosh. I mean, it's just it's all just too much. Um so yes, let's talk about something else for a moment here. You know how they say don't grocery shop when you're hungry because you completely forget what you actually need and end up with a cart full of random ingredients and snacks? Well, I can confirm that is a similar rule that applies to wine shopping. Don't attempt to shop for wine when you're in desperate need of wine for like a party or something. All of a sudden, all the labels look the same. I couldn't tell you the difference between a Pinot Noir and a Syrah if my life depended on it. I end up just grabbing something random and nine times out of ten, it's just not what I had in mind. Yeah, it- if, if you've been there and you've had that happen to you before, if that happens to you on the regular, let us introduce you to First Leaf. It's the fully customizable wine club that sends curated boxes of wine that are perfect for you and your taste right to your door. So you are never left to panic by in a time of need. Unlike other wine clubs, First Leaf has a one of a kind algorithm that works in parallel with your feedback to help curate future shipments. So as time goes on, your shipments actually get more and more tailored to your taste. If you are a bit overwhelmed with the world of wine, same. Okay, all the more reason to give First Leaf a try. With First Leaf, I've been able to discover so many new types of wine that I ended up loving that I know I never would have picked up in a grocery store. I found a bunch of new favorites and I always stay stocked up on my uh, my trusty go-tos thanks to First Leaf. And by the way, these are quality, delicious wines, people. Okay, so check this deal out. Save time, money, and stress with First Leaf, the wine club designed with you in mind. And join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash chatty. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. That's less than $5 a bottle. Actually, technically, it's $4.99 a bottle. Uh, free shipping at f- tryfirstleaf.com slash chatty. So uh, the other day I caught a whiff of myself after a workout and broads, I am not exaggerating when I say this. I was shocked. Okay. I don't consider myself a smelly person. I mean, I don't think I am, but even after a 45 minute intense workout, I smelled freaking incredible. I smelled amazing. And it was because of my favorite deodorant, which also happens to be natural. And that is native. Okay. If you're thinking I've tried natural deodorants before, but they haven't worked for me. Well, we hear you, but just do us a favor and try native because it's different. Of course, everyone's experience using natural deodorant is unique, but I've tried a lot and native has really great results. So all that to say, Jess and I are native fans, but now even more so because native is on a mission to overhaul your entire bathroom. Yes, that's right. So obviously you got the native deodorant, but have you tried their body wash? What about native's toothpaste or new favorite, their mineral based sunscreen that is right. Native now has a broad spectrum SPF 30 that can be used on your face and body. Living in sunny California, I consider myself somewhat of a sunscreen expert, uh, if you will. And I have to say, Native is 10 out of 10 with the sunscreen. It's super lightweight, absorbs quickly, and comes in an amazing coconut and pineapple scent or non-scented option, if you Mm. prefer. Uh, I apply mine first thing in the morning and and at least three times throughout the day because you need to, okay? It protects your skin. You need that sunscreen. Don't forget the sunscreen. Stay fresh. Stay clean with Native by going to nativedo.com slash chatty or use promo code chatty at checkout and get 20% off your first order that's native deo.com slash chatty or use promo code chatty at checkout for 20 percent off your first order okay so before diving into like some of the other heavier topics <laughs> um should we talk noah abigail yes. and then kenny mari and demi quick yeah the noah and abigail situation i don't know what to think about it i mean first of all oh, I, he did he placed the blame on her again in this conversation Correct. Like, read between the lines. He's like, maybe then you could have been more aware of what you were doing wrong. (laughs) Everyone was like celebrating. Like, yes, they're back. And I'm like, but did you actually listen to the words that he said? Because she was basically saying like, I feel like maybe I'm not a great communicator. And he was kind of like, yeah, correct. (laughs) So now we're back. It was like, okay. Like, no, like, no, take a seat. Do I will like, I would like to say, um, 
on a positive end about Noah, I am living for the for the jewelry that Noah is giving us this season. You know, I love a man in jewelry and it's almost like every time a couple ends, he puts on a new piece in remembrance for them. I was actually shocked. Like I, I, I was had just been like, you know, taking everything in and then I was like wait is he wearing like four necklaces yeah, right I'm now I'm telling you another <laughs> one it, another one is added every episode and I'm like oh my god I mean I'm loving this I'm waiting for the rings because I love when a guy has a lot of rings on and I'm like Noah even though I'm not a huge fan right now like I do I have to just <laughs> stop and appreciate the aesthetic of what's going on oh, I man. do appreciate that it kind of falls in line with his like lounging everywhere is like all the jewelry he's wearing it's a very rock star of it. <laughs> And he also, no, just broads, just take note. I don't think I've seen a single scene with Noah, no matter what time of day it is, where he isn't holding a glass of champagne. And I'm like, this man is living out here. <laughs> he is bejeweled. He is champagned. He is lounging. He is taking in this whole experience. I mean, you know, I've said it before. I will say, like, Noah's a little bit underrated, iconic, a little he bit is. of an underrated icon in his own right. And and I will say, do when they do do the ITMs, he will throw in some fire commentary sometimes, and I'm just like, all right, I cannot deny. No, but him and Abigail need to stop. That needs I to just, stop. I'm just she like, needs to walk away and get herself a man that's actually going to work for her and is yes. actually going to be attentive to her. Yeah. So what I did is I took a little note ski and I was like, okay, noted that you said that you're going to try to keep pursuing. We'll see. Same. Don't believe it, but you know, we'll see. The chemistry's not there. <sighs> I know, it just doesn't feel there in that way. Like, you guys really that into making out with each other? Doesn't seem like it. I just feel like someone could come down onto the sand and just absolutely sweep Abigail off her Love feet that. and just be so attentive and wonderful and have amazing chemistry. And I feel like maybe her being tied to Noah so quickly, she maybe missed out on. I already can't remember. Were Ivan and Abigail ever a thing? No. I, I could see that. Yeah. Like, well, well, let's just get someone for Ivan. Jesus Christ. I, honestly, I mean, after, and we'll get into that too, but after this whole then like Chris, Jasenia, Alana situation, I'm like, I was like, remember Ivan? You know who wouldn't have done this? Ivan. Come on. He's just he's just literally hanging out and like chilling. And I feel like everyone's just going to keep him there. So a, a, a woman will continue to keep Ivan on the beach because everyone just likes having him. There why isn't Demi wonderful. going after him? I don't know. I don't. There's so many. I'm like, why isn't everyone going after him? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, but who is the hot commodity is Kenny. That's who everyone is going after. And poor Kenny. My man is tired. <laughs> Kenny is like is exhausted. <sighs> <laughs> I mean, let's remember, you know, Kenny is 40. Like he is he is he's a little older. He needs some rest. And I know how I'd be on that beach. I'm like, listen, some of you like 23, 24 year olds as a thir almost 33 year old. I need some rest. Kenny's he's like, 40. And he tour is easier than this. I am more rested on tour. It's like, do you know the type of guys that I'm having to constantly <laughs> wrangle these boy band, these boy band guys? Like, do you know how exhausting that is? And yet that is a break in comparison <laughs> to what I'm experiencing on this beach right now. Poor so, Mari just lost her mind throughout the episodes, basically. Yeah, I feel like I'm not. So I was seeing some people being like, oh, Mari's doing this because, you know, now she she lost him and she doesn't have another person there. So I think Mari likes him. I think she likes him too. And I fully believe her. I fully believe her when she was telling him I panicked. Yes. And so I believe it too. It's kind of what I was saying, what I would have done if I was <laughs> Serena in the Joe situation. Yeah. yeah. It's like, there was almost this like, ba like a it's protective a mechanism. Yeah, just be like, totally. You know what? You should, I, I should go and see people and you should go because you're feeling all of these things that you haven't felt. Well, all of these women are far too immature for Kenny. He needs a woman who can <laughs> handle him like Kenny Jess. Needs <laughs> Kenny needs a woman. Okay, so do you know what my theory is too? What? I believe, I deeply believe that Kenny does have a woman because you know how we always joke about how Kenny like will always like like my things and like comment and stuff, yes. um, which is just it's just been a joke yeah, right whatever but i have noticed that kenny has stopped and so either i have offended yeah kenny, it's only it's probably because we're bringing it up <laughs> or we're bringing 
making it up. But like, you know, maybe he's just not, you know, going around and like liking all the ladies' pictures because maybe he's in a relationship and maybe he doesn't want to, you know, start anything. And he like, you know. I hope he has a woman who's over 30. Well, Mari's not, but. No, no, I hope it's not. No, I hope his woman is not Mari. You want to, you want, oh, so you think maybe someone else is coming down or that he has since started dating someone? I hope he's dated someone, dating someone off the franchise. Well, I mean, we see in, ooh, we see in these episodes that Mari and Kenny do declare their like love for each other. Yeah, that's a little much for me. It was a little intense, but I mean, it felt, it again though, it felt very real. Yeah. She was like, regardless of the rose, I'm here. I, I would leave this beach today with you. Like, I want to date you. And Kenny was like, I int- I also want to. And I'll tell you what, Mari's the best option for him there. I think so, too. I, I, I like Mari a lot. I really yeah. like Mari. And I could see them working out. Um, But well, on the other hand. On the other hand. <laughs> We don't even have to go that far into it. No, we don't. We really don't. Um, there was a, there was a few situations with Kenny and Demi. The first being when he came back from his date with Tia, uh. and there was that uncomfortable conversation. Um, well. One of the things I noted, and I don't know who said it, but when te- when Kenny first came back from his conversation or from his date, excuse me, with Tia, and Mari right away decided to grab him mm. and pull him aside as soon as he came down, you know, Demi was upset. Oh yeah, and someone in the background said how disrespectful it was of Mari to just grab Kenny. I heard that too, and I was like, the fuck. And I'm like, do we recall what happened with the whole like Demi and Mari situation? Like. Demi, these people Demi don't know what they're talking in, about. Like after having a conversation, no, these, these people really don't know what they're talking about. And Mari said too, she was on. I think it was clickbait, and they were asking her about like her the whole cake drama, and she said she's like, okay, so here's the behind the scenes tea of why I was so upset. She said it was my idea to throw Kenny the party. She's like, <gasps> I talked to the producers, I got the cake set up, I got every like it was my idea. And so when Demi came walking down with the cake, she's like, that's why I lost it. Because the level of disrespect was sky high. I mean, that is still immature, but that changes the whole contract. I would have flipped the fuck out. I would have thrown everything in the fire. The condoms, the banner, the cake. Everything would have gotten thrown in the fire. Like straight yeah, up. That's so shitty. So now, you know, granted, again, let's remember production. It's probably Demi probably didn't hear that Mari was no. doing that and then go, I'm going to take this. No, cake. They're probably like, oh, here's a cake for Kenny. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, 1000 yeah. percent. Mari talked to producers and then producers were like, yeah. hey, Demi, what about classic, this great classic idea? Classic reality TV setup. So then Mari's upset at Demi and Demi's <laughs> like, ah, well, we had another <laughs> water spill. <laughs> Whoopsie. It's not paradise if, um, but you know, yeah. So it's again the tip. It's a typical producer, typical production move. Where then, yeah, she's mad at at Demi. Demi's probably like, "Why are you like? Why are you acting like this? Why are you being right. so mad at me?" Because she probably didn't know right. that it was Mari's idea. And then they're like, you know, which I was getting some DMs from people being like, "How much producer? What's the producer involvement? Whatever." And that's a perfect example. It's like it's not like producers are tell like they're not exactly like you go say this then you go say this it's not like that it's Mm -hmm. it's like what you're saying where it's like yeah mari why don't you throw this party we'll help you whatever oh demi here's a cake you should go sing happy birthday yes yes you know it's just kind of so it's like the producers are setting people up for dramatic situations they know the people they know the the thomases and the aarons who have a problem with each other so, you know, there might uh, producers might have even been the ones who later in the episode encouraged Becca to pers- check out a potential with Thomas. Like totally. that they might be pushing those yes. things. Yes. Um or even Chelsea, hey, maybe you should maybe maybe have you considered Aaron? Like Aaron's a really good right. guy. Everyone thinks right. he's so funny and has such a great personality to make sure that Aaron's not yeah. there when Becca talks or to Or it's Thomas. even more it could even be more subtle where someone who's friends with Chelsea would go, they're in ITMs and be like, Who do you think's a good match for Chelsea? The producer's saying that to them. 
Yeah. What about what about Aaron? Like, I feel like I could actually like, see that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, Chelsea, you should go. Yeah. You know, yeah, Aaron might be really good for you. Huh? Planting seeds everywhere. Planting mm-hmm. seeds. Planting but anyway, seeds. yeah, that conversation, I mean, she, she, both conversations, you know, she was just fully imploding. Yeah. Or exploding. I wouldn't, I don't know, both. Yeah, I think more of an implode. I think you're right. And and then, you know, and then she brought up the, like, let's go to the boom. Do you want to go to the boom okay. boom room? I'm going to say it again. I said it a couple weeks ago or whatever. You need to take sex off the table if you're using it in this capacity. When you're drunk, you are not aroused at all. Mm-hmm. And this person says they don't want to be with you anymore. And then you're saying, let's have sex right now. Yeah. That is not healthy. No. It's not healthy. No. And then, you know, Kenny, again, Kenny is <laughs> tired. Kenny's tired. And also, <laughs> Kenny's also trying to make the right call here. Like, you know, it, it's like, okay, I don't want it to say no. Kenny is 40. Then the, yeah, Let's Kenny not is forget. 40. He has a little bit of life experience. He's had some life experience. Belt. He's like, I'm not going to try to hurt her feelings and be like, no. But I'm also, I, I, I shouldn't do that. So I'm going to be like, I'm tired. Can we like talk tomorrow? Well, and then in their next conversation, she was like, but you had sex with me. And now you're like, and it's like. So we find out that they had sex. We were right. 100% sure. Right, sure. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, it, that's that's what keeps getting brought up is that you <sighs> have, that he had sex with her, which. <sighs> this is then, you know what? Perfect example of why. We always talk about communication and boundaries are important. Yeah. If you if you are deciding that you want to have sex with someone and your expectations are if I have sex with this person, we are exclusive. That's okay if that's yes. what you want. A oh my thousand gosh, percent. Totally. But then that needs to be communicated to the person. No, and what, instead of what was communicated was it's fun. It's all fun. Let's right. just have fun. Let's just fuck. This is just let's do this. Right. So then that person doesn't know that that's what you're expectations are and that's what your boundary is because you haven't communicated that so then when you're saying to him like you know but you had sex with me but you had sex with me it's a little bit like well he didn't he's, know that that was part of you know what yeah, was, what was going on for your feelings at this point and yeah you gotta deal with that on your yeah. own yeah and he's uh, yeah, he's res- and he's responsible to be respectful and uh you know um, honor honor her honor her in the situation right. which i feel like he did he yeah. was he heard her he wasn't like pulling any like I didn't feel like he was pulling any like slick moves at all. I think Kenny was just like, <laughs> this isn't going any further. Yeah. And I'm sorry that you are upset about that. Yeah. Yeah. But Kenny didn't do anything wrong. No, no. And then Demi started to bring in the, the uh, talk about Mari that she's, mean that she's yeah, a pageant I mean, girl like, and it was like you know it was just it was a, it was a like a an immature latch last ditch effort to try to salvage something and i don't think we've seen any of that from mari and yeah but anywho <laughs> i wonder if they'll keep it who has power the the roses the men this yeah, week I, I don't know Okay, so there's a couple people. There's like James, who we don't know who James, right? Because because Mari gave James her rose last week, and obviously Kenny and Mari are going to be exchanging roses. So maybe maybe James gives Didn't his rose. James already give Demi a rose. Yes, <laughs> I don't think that's. Gonna I don't be think happening again. you know. I really I really hope if she wants to stay on the beach that James gives Natasha a rose. So she actually Mm. has an opportunity to get to know people versus what happened. Now, speaking of this, do you know when you wish you could go back in history and erase certain things that you said? Anything positive we ever said about Brendan? Correct. (laughs) As I was watching this episode, all I could think about was all of the episodes in Tasha's season where we are simping over him. Okay, I don't think it was you, mm-hmm. but it might have been me. But one of us was like, I don't know about this guy. He just seems I think, too good to be I true. I think that's you. I think I was just simping. I think you felt red I think flags. I was saying he was hiding something. And he's like... Yeah. So one of us was saying, I remember there being discussion no, of like... No, I'm pretty sure that was I you. I don't know about this. I'm pretty sure I that was you. Because all I was thinking about truly watching this episode was just like if someone then is listening to old episodes and we're just like oh my god Brendan even like episodes earlier in Bachelor in Paradise I, mean, I was definitely simping over him too we were definitely like he's the no, but, but 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 I was even thinking about like an episode ago 
where it's just like, well, Brendan is still, we love, da, 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 da. and I'm just like, well, damn it. Now that's just there. I'll tell you what, judging on how he, he was in these episodes, I don't think you and I would have more than a 10 minute conversation with him after which being like, I'm kind of over it. Probably. He just seems like now we're seeing his true colors and oh. it seems like his energy is just such an arrogant dickhole. Yes. Like, just, which which I will say surprised me that there was such this um, constant talk about followers and social media because he's not active on social media. So I wouldn't have expected that from him. It really did throw me off in that way. Like, I'm like, I OK, like him being a total asshole. OK, but like the uh, but the obsession with like gaining something from this show was a little surprising to me. Granted, Even though it's like at the end of the day, he went on a reality TV well, show. Yeah. So. And granted the Instagram com follower conversation is a conversation. This is the only thing I'll say in any form of defense, which defense is a very strong word. Everyone talks about Instagram followers. Of course. Every single person does. Gray and I do. You know, like, oh my God, you posted that? Of course. I'm, I'm now at 37K of or whatever. Course. Every, of course. When I left, I had already gone up 20,000 followers. Regardless of how important it is to you, it's still a thing. So it's people are still like, oh my God, I hit 400K. Holy shit. Fuck. I've gone up 30,000 followers in the past two days. You know, yes. it's like, whatever. Yes. That's, that is a very normal conversation. And I, I, it's, stupid as hell that they would be talking about that on camera knowing exactly how that's going to sound truly shocking truly shocking and the other thing that i wanted to say was this so obviously in the last few episodes i have had been having my theories of natasha <laughs> be, being a friend of piper's and being like natasha is being this great friend and knows that piper's coming you know and is like you know basically kind of making or i don't know being a friend of yeah, brendan yeah. And, and and piper's <laughs> you know but if someone were obviously to come down that she was interested in that it'd be like bye brendan whatever sure. um i though there are still those photos out and about with natasha and piper yeah um though piper made some statement on her instagram about like you don't know what goes by, down behind the scenes with friends M my thing is this at the end of the day even if, I don't think this anymore. Yeah. But even if n this was a plan, it will never justify, ever justify what Natasha had to experience. No. And I don't fucking care. Let's just say from day one. Let's say hypothetically Hypothetically speaking, speaking Piper and Natasha are friends. And she's like, hey, I'm going to be going on the beach. Probably there. Or Brendan's there. If he's there before me, like, and you're not interested in anybody, roses, like, maybe you guys can give each other, like, you know, these secret friendship roses, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay. Let's just say hypothetically that was the case. If I was Natasha and I was like, yeah, I'm agreeing to do that and then experienced what fucking Brendan did. So that's that's for me, like now why, why I don't even yeah. care. Like, I know I was throwing those theories around before because I was like, this doesn't line up. It doesn't make sense. And now I'm seeing some other people like obviously like throwing those theories around. I don't care. Yeah, because what Natasha experienced was absolutely totally. deplorable. Totally. And I definitely don't think there was, like you said, I don't think it's relevant, but I don't think there was. I think like they were hanging out in a group when they got their nails done, whatever. Yeah. But you're right. I think that's kind of irrelevant. The only reason why I, and then some people, because I was saying on my Instagram, I was like, my theory is that producers were like telling Natasha, like stick around with Brandon. Yep. We're like maybe X person who she's been hoping will come down is coming soon, whatever. Yes. And the yes. only, and then some people were like, why are, does there even have to be this theory? It's like, that's dumb, whatever. The only reason why I was bringing up that theory is because Natasha doesn't seem like the kind of person that would kick, you know, kick around with Brendan for that long when she was getting nothing out of the relationship. So right. that's why I was like, there has to be some sort of other explanation because why the hell would she stay around on the beach so long for some dude like Brendan? Even before he had this totally shitty behavior towards her, he was being kind of a shithead to her before. Yes, 1,000%. So that's why I was like, there has to be some theory. Like, this just doesn't make sense why she would stick around with him that long. No, I know. And like, I know for myself, you know, it's it's obviously when the show starts and you know all these people have Oh yeah, met in some way. You're trying. I know. For me, I'm like I'm trying to come up with all these theories of what's going to happen in the next episode because maybe we'll be right, and that's yeah. exciting. Well, guess what? I don't think I was right. <laughs> <laughs> 
No. So I guess the, the moral of the story is you know that I don't know spoilers <laughs> because I wouldn't no. have guessed that one. No, um, but yeah. But I, I think too, like when you want to talk about theories where it's like, okay, so why would Brendan and Piper do this? I think as far as producer play goes, 1000%, they were, the producers probably wanted them on the show because they were very beloved on their season and, uh, and they knew that they were like seeing each other. So they, you know, you know how it goes where it's like when you were seeing Gray, it was a little bit like, okay, well, how do we make this work? I think they probably got played and, and again, and not coming to anyone's defense because there was really shitty behavior regardless. I think they got played hard by producers. Mm-hmm. I think they got told you guys are going to be couple goals on the beach. I think they were telling Brendan, you know, wait around, wait around. Piper's coming. I think they were telling Piper, you get on that beach and you go, girl. Go for your man. Everyone's going to love you, too. There's something so special between you. We can see it. Whatever. I don't really think. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. I don't really think any of this falls super hard on Piper. I don't either. And and know, to me, this is all Brendan. Like what I what I do acknowledge is that you know she had been she had posted some things that made it look like she was not taking Natasha's feelings seriously in this, and her and Brendan were leaning into this Ew, whole like that was, villain thing, and that was like not cool. Her just being like the rumors are true, or whatever. Like yeah, yeah. and, and I like, think that there needs and there hasn't been a public apology to Natasha, and like no. that needs to happen. Yeah. Because I don't give a shit about them planning to be there together. No. Who cares, guys? If you're guys? not hurting anybody, great. And that's the thing, like, the, I mean, I'm like a Bachelor fan base. If you really think it's such a crime on God, against God to plan to orchestrate to get followers, hello, welcome to the fucking game. Where have right. you been? Where have you been? But, like, but again, when you're hurting someone in the process, right. therein lies the, the problem. The issue was how... Brendan treated Natasha. That to me is the issue. Yes, and I think probably what Brendan and Natasha via, like you know via producers were getting was for example, we talk about Demi and her girlfriend Christian last BIP. Um yes, did Demi get like kickback for that 100% and I want to acknowledge the fact that being on the show and being bisexual was like she got a lot of heat for that and that was a huge moment for the show Mm -hmm. and so happy that they did that Mm -hmm. but they were dating before Mm -hmm. christian came on the show and then they did were received by you know a a large group of people they were received with open arms right uh because their love story was redemptive of that yes yes so they're bringing on uh someone who was not even on the show where they had been dating and they didn't get any repercussions from the people on the beach so mm-hmm. much that they were seeing each other before Which and she's getting my big down. issue with that was that Demi was with Derek. knowingly leading Derek yes. on knowing full well that her girlfriend was going to come on. Yes. And that always seems to be the issue, right? Yes. It, and that's the issue I have with the Chris, excuse me, Christy and Alana thing where it's like, why is, you know, Chrissy playing Jesenia. You know, it's like, that's not cool. Yeah, it's like, don't do that to somebody. Like, get to know someone on a friendship level. If Brendan would have gotten to know someone on a friendship level and basically done what, like, Deandra and Ivan are doing, they're exchanging... They have each other's backs. Yeah, whether we're exchanging roses right now as friends, like, so that we can continue to stay on the beach. It would have... I don't think that they would have gotten... I don't think that they would have gotten a lot of kickback. I think people would have been excited to see Brendan and Piper on the beach together because everyone was so excited that they were dating outside of the show in general when yeah. those when those things started, when or those like rumors started or the pictures started coming out. But I bet that Piper and Brendan were getting probably this narrative from producers of like, so you saw how it went for Demi and Christian. Like they're not they're not gonna people aren't gonna have a problem with it. People aren't gonna have a problem with it. So they are probably like, and it's like, yeah, oh, I'm going to get more followers. You know, it'll be good sure. for, for our businesses, sure. blah, 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 blah. And would have been 
I would have celebrated it. I don't fucking care if they're dating. If she would have come down and he would have been exchanging friendship roses with other people or whoever, it would have been like, amazing, they're together. Now we get to see them IRL. But the fact of what he did to Natasha, it was like, well, now we have a completely different situation. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. No. And and, and the way that he just treated her like trash was just so nauseating to watch and and the terms you know the things he was saying to piper then after of like well like as if he was doing her a favor yeah. was so disrespectful and just gross and what to me it felt like he was insinuating which is what we were talking about last week when that i that we talked about with tajwan it was like why are you assuming that this darker skinned black woman doesn't have any chance at finding love here. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? The colorism was rampant. It was just like, you're, you really like, you clearly like have no idea what's going on in your brain. If you're just going to like flippantly say those things of like, well, she's not going to find anyone else here. I'm like, there's tons of other fucking single girls and single well, guys. And when she looked at him and she was just like, you do know when I came on the beach, like I was also interested in other people. And Brendan can literally go fuck himself because it's like Nat <sighs> Natasha could have had many an option you led her to believe that you were into her. You focused on her. And by the way, by the fucking way, when Natasha was gracious enough to be hearing, you know, the the talk about Rumors. Piper, again, regardless of if she had heard it before, when she heard about that and she sat down with him and so graciously was kind of like, so tell me your side of what's going on. Are you seeing her? How much? And he said to Natasha, oh I have gotten connected on a deeper level to you in these past two days than I have in my entirety of knowing Piper. If that doesn't tell you, if like, if, and then, and then he's has the fucking gall to look at Natasha later and be like, I made it clear to you that I wasn't blah, blah, blah. I'm like, roll the tapes, sir. Roll the tapes. And in the conversation that the two of them had, uh, but right before Piper came in, I was like furiously like writing and trying to film it because I was like so just just agitated watching it. Him and Natasha are in the day bed and he's telling Natasha, they're talking about like the other relationships and he's telling Natasha like, yeah, I think some of these guys are like manipulating the situation because they jumped in too quick because they're trying to get roses and blah, 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 blah. And she like asks him, she's like, do you think you could do that? And he says, I just could not be the guy navigating dates with other people. Like I'd be awful at it. I am not a manipulative person. <laughs> Looking her dead in the eyes and saying, I could not be the type of guy who is using someone for a rose. That's a lie. And he lied to her, too. Like when she <sighs> brings up how many times they had seen each other and Piper's thinking, like, we've seen each other a dozen times. I don't think Piper was at fault in this, but I, I was like, girl, you are so dumb. Like it, it was like <laughs> it was like, yes, it, 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 it in the situation. Brendan is lying through his teeth yes! over and over and over and over again. Nonstop lying. Piper comes in, doesn't know what's going on. All that she knows is it's like we're dating and then goes on the date with Brendan. And they have this like conversation about like, what have you been doing? And he's basically kind of like, well, I had to stay here somehow is what he's telling her. And she's like, I get it. I get it. And she doesn't know everything. But then when Piper sits down with Natasha and Natasha. I love that Natasha pulled Piper aside and didn't pull Brendan aside first that she was like, can I talk to you? And it was kind of like, I want to get your side of the story, because just so you know, this is what's happening. Mm. And then she hears it from Natasha and it's there was a level of kind of like, OK, that's nice to hear. Bye. Oh, no, no, no. That's that's the, that's the thing. It was like Piper doesn't really. And, and I don't really don't do the age thing, but she was coming off as such a fucking 23 year old yeah. to me of just like, 
okay like i've got my boyfriend and we're such goals and so cute together i'm like we're just gonna do our thing yeah. like honestly fuck anyone who gets in the way of us and our love yeah and and we're <laughs> and, so and immature the one thing that i did i will say that i have to acknowledge that like was very upsetting for me in with piper because it, in general i think I place all pretty much all blame on Brendan. It's like Brendan was the one who was manipulating people, who was manipulating Natasha, lying. And then the way that he then interacted with Natasha afterwards. uh, Well, and I imagine he was in Piper's ear too, which would uh, affect the way that she was then treating Natasha. Of course. Well, we hear Brendan making that side comment, like, I'm so annoyed with her. Like, she's been so annoying. So then Piper is like, Hearing oh, that yeah. from her boyfriend. Yeah, of course. And Piper's like, oh my God, yeah, she, he's, she's probably been so clingy on him. And like, ugh, but, you know, he's told her all along that he had something with someone else. But when, but after Natasha has that conversation and opens up to Piper about what Brendan said to her and how he interacted with her and now how Natasha feels, that then Piper went back to Brendan and thanked him for doing, in her words, the heavy lifting and that's then where I was like, that's that was for me where I was like, dude, no, like you're talking about a a, a woman who he, this man completely manipulated. And even if your boyfriend is feeding you all this yes. to pay ref- attention to what to, re- to say that you. about a human being. No. No, this is gross. Yes. And I'm just like, you're an idiot if you think you're going to look good after talking to her like that and then talking about her and talking about everything. Like, you are so stupid. It's like, what did you, what, hey, my guy, <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? What did you think was going to happen? Oh, okay. I literally, I just, I just saw the time and we do <laughs> okay, have to take okay, another yeah, pause. Yeah. And I'm so sorry for the abrupt transition, but we do have to take another pause. <laughs> Jeez, I'm all right. I mean, this is why I was saying, like, like my my anxiety was through the roof. Hey, you know what? But when you need a palate cleanser, we, why don't you just talk? I'm not going to lie to you. I was hopping on my phone during these episodes because I was getting, things were getting a little intense. You know what? You are so right. <laughs> palate cleanser. Brats, if there's one thing I've learned this year uh, is that you've got to have ways to decompress, a.k.a. when you're watching a horrific episode of Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> and not like, you know, one or two ways. I think better safe than sorry. Make a list of how to decompress. I've got ways to decompress that cost money, ways that are free, ways that are indoor, outdoor, alone, with friends. The list goes on. But one of my fave ways to decompress is my favorite because it's so convenient and so quick on my list, and that is the game of Best Fiends, the mobile puzzle game that can be played anytime, anywhere. Best Fiends is great. There are thousands of levels and tons of adorable characters to collect, and they add more every single week, so you're never going to run out of puzzles to solve. But even if you only have like three minutes to play, it's still just as fun as if you had three hours to play, because the levels are quick, the game picks up right where you left off each time, and that's why it's the perfect break in your day, because it works with however much time you have. Mm -hmm. I am freaking obsessed with this game. I like to play it between meetings, if I'm feeling stressed out or if ty- if I have to wait for something also like when Evan's driving I like to sit in that co-pilot seat oh, and yeah. play away um, it's the perfect way to kill time Best Fiends has a hundred million downloads already and trust us after you play it once you'll understand why they have that hype Download the five-star rated puzzle game Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Uh, Broads, if you have kids at home, then there is a 100% chance that this school year is an adjustment in one way or another for you and your little ones. Some kids are transitioning back to in-person classes. Some have stayed fully remote. Some are still doing some combination of both. No matter what learning looks like for you and your family this year, it never hurts to have a little bit of help, which is why we're so excited to tell you about our favorite favorite at home teaching partner kiwi co oh, seriously it's one of the favorites the around our house too if you've got little learners at home you are going to want to listen up each month kiwi co delivers age specific crates filled with science and art projects right to your door and each crate is de- designed to tackle one subject in a comprehensive way that your child can understand and most importantly um, in a way that they will enjoy everything from learning about the solar system to building cityscapes and tracking weather patterns the possibilities are endless and every parent's favorite three words all supplies included yes you heard that right inside your kiwico uh, crate you will find multiple projects instructions that are designed to be easily followed by your child and every 
single thing you need to complete the project. That means you can spend less time digging around the junk drawer for a glue stick and more time playing and learning with your kids. KiwiCo is redefining learning with hands-on projects that build confidence, creativity, and critical thinking skills. There's something for every kid or kid at heart at KiwiCo. They have something for all ages. Uh, Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with code chatty at kiwico.com. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O dot com promo code chatty sorry broads had to turn that air on because it was hot um yeah so i mean with the three of them at the end of it there was i mean there was just so many things that like brendan said i'm like looking through my notes right now and there were just so many things that brendan said to natasha yeah. Yeah. telling her that off. selective hearing but, <laughs> do, okay when he <laughs> when he said to her <laughs> That they did not have an intimate relationship or romantic relationship in any way. And he said, I specifically said to you that I don't have those types of feelings for you on a romantic level, but you're just, you know, you're an amazing person. So I wanted to give you this rose and give you an opportunity. And Natasha looks at him and is like, did you say that, though? And he's like, well, no, but like, you know, I was saying that you did deserve to find love, like whatever happens. And, you know, I think that you just had selective hearing. <laughs> like, Okay, so what you just said is that you told her that you never had any feelings about an intimate or romantic relationship. And then when she said, oh, did you really say that? You were like, no. So you want to talk about selective hearing? What about your selective speaking, sir, of what you're deciding not to share (laughs) and what you're keeping in your own brain and whatever plan you're hatching? It was all bullshit. It It was was all all, bullshit. It was all bullshit. At least the audience was able to see that very clearly, though. That's the only thing that I'm happy about. I saw Natasha on her um, Instagram post uh, saying that she has like since Bachelor in Paradise started that every night every like Monday Tuesday she's been having insomnia mm. before going into it because she's like I just haven't been able to sleep because I'm so anxious about these episodes she's like when yeah. you're in the moment and it's happening to you and someone's speaking to you like the way that Brendan's speaking she's like you're questioning yourself right. and so she's right, like and you don't really when you're in the heat of the moment you don't even remember the conversations no. that well so you're like did he say it like that like it is right right so she's like to have then the validation and support of everyone and how everyone has now been following her and sending her love. Uh, You know, what she experienced was absolutely terrible, but I am so glad that people are supporting her. That she's being kind of like vindicated in this and everyone's seeing what a piece of shit he is. Nothing would be better than to have whoever is the person that she really wants to meet or see again, walk down those steps for the love of God. Producers do something about it. Bring the person in, call in the individual, please. In fact, now I'm like, I got to go follow her right now because I haven't before. Oh, she's a a great follow. She is really kind of blowing up. (laughs) Yes, she is. Because the ridiculous thing is that Natasha, I don't think even had 100,000 followers yet. Even though Natasha is weekly on clickbait, it's yeah. like, come on, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. follow Natasha. Yeah. She is she is constantly part of Bachelor Nation. She's a fantastic pod- podcast host. She's a very fun follow. Aw. Clay Harbor said, Natasha is intelligent, beautiful, and funny. Trust me, Brendan. She has prospects. I love them. And jo- everyone, all the guys. I loved this moment, actually, because a lot of the men in the franchise, too, were, like, standing we're just like- up and were like... <laughs> No, like Natasha has fucking prospects. Yeah, and like, that was kind of like a beautiful moment to see everyone like standing up for her. Yes, and unfollowing Brendan. <sighs> oh, Lord. Um, but yeah. So fuck them. <laughs> fuck them. Uh, but Brendan, yeah, Brendan and and Piper are kind of doing their thing. And I mean, it was it was interesting because then into the second episode, the... The commercials led us to believe that there was going to be this like reckoning yeah. of Brendan and Piper. No, not yet. Surprise, surprise. But it is coming. Yes. That's what I said, not yet. It is coming. Yeah, instead we got the reckoning of the people we don't give a fuck about. <laughs> <laughs> this was an entire episode around two people that I didn't ever remember seeing before. Apparently someone said in my DMs that I was really going hard on Alana. You mean... Alana? When? During her season with the spaghetti or something? Oh, I mean... I don't I mean, not, you not like hard. actually going hard, but like, you know, I, I had things to say about her you apparently. Were, I don't think, yeah, you were a fan, but like we really only saw her for like a 
couple seconds. Apparently, on she screen. had a food kiss. So. Oh yes, and we know we don't like the food kiss. No. It's just not for us. So she's my enemy now. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not. It's not fun to watch. Yeah. Um, okay, so in the next episode, um, we do get a new host. We have Titus. Who? This is another thing, though. Yeah. With the changing hosts, that is part of the reason everything feels so unmoored. Like we're yes. a ship without a harbor. We don't know where we're headed. Well, I would imagine it's very stressful for the contestants because yeah. there's someone coming in. You're like being reintroduced every few days to someone else. And it's not like they have like Tasha and Caitlin there who are coming right. by and like know what drama is going on and checking in and being like, so how are you doing? I mean, they do have Wells. That's true. They do have Wells and he is at the bar. I wonder how many hours a day he's actually at the bar. What? Like, in, like maybe two Good question. Like, is he really there? Like, there's all day? no way. There's no way. Because he's not there in the like when they when they're getting breakfast and stuff. I feel like I've noticed that there's like they don't show who's behind the bar. Oh, he's he starts at happy hour. Yeah, or like they just send him in for an hour when like the drama is getting a little spicy. They're like, hey, you got to go down. You got to go down and start talking to everybody. We're about to bring in Kendall. Go down. Yeah, get 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 in there. I mean, because there's no way. Can you imagine? <laughs> They're all, Wells is just like dripping in sweat, working 24 hours a day, just like real, really earning real. his paycheck. <laughs> just like, how much do you think they're paying him? I wonder. I bet now pretty well. Top contestants, I think, the most a contestant will get is six to eight hundred dollars a day on Paradise. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which for like four weeks. I mean, so he's there a month. Yeah, it's a long time. He's been doing it for a long time now, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Years. Anyway. All right. So, um, so, but Titus is the new host. I, I am a huge fan of Titus and he was so fun. So fun. I am. I'm like, thank God. I am loving the Broadway energy he is bringing. (laughs) I wish that the, that pair or the producers would have really like let him lean into the Broadway, Mm. given him a full solo. Mm. Yeah. Kickball change, like a little dance moment. What was up with the VIP party thing? Can we talk about that? Like, yeah. Um, I was having horrifying flashbacks of like first COVID Claire date, like in a conference room, Romeo oh, and Juliet. I will <laughs> never forget that ever. That was like, there was like <laughs> no music. That was so crazy, dude. We were all so traumatized from COVID. <laughs> and then we're like, and then you're going to do this to that us? That was like a fever dream. I'm still not sure if it's real. <laughs> I have to go back and check the tapes to see if that's actually what we saw on screen or if With I like was like cardboard props. Like that yeah. was just. Yeah. They hired like the local La Quinta elementary school to like <laughs> set that up and <laughs> Extra credit. (laughs) But that's what this VIP party reminded me of. I was also, speaking of flashbacks, I was getting flashbacks to the last, the event that they had two years ago on VIP, which was Goose and Glitter's wedding. Oh, yeah. At least there was a ton more people there. There was a lot of people, so it actually added kind of a... It was a vibe. It was an interesting element. because bachelor people, too. Yes, there's other bachelor people there. Um, it felt organic, especially because the other bachelor people there, it was like, oh, I, and then they brought in a few of the people from the wedding onto the sand. Yeah. This one, it was like when they brought the women, it was like, there's no other people here. You it's kn- so the, empty and awkward. Do you know what it felt like? It felt like, um, oh, this is so painful to even say, it feels like a youth group event that, <sighs> um, it's like a special event. It's like not a regular event and your mm-hmm. parents like sign you up for it. And you show up and there's like, you know, 11 people total there. Yeah. That's really too real. <laughs> it's so real. It almost makes me want to cry. Like, and you're, yeah. you know, you're going to be stuck there for two hours. No. It's I, supposed to be like fun. Now that you say that, I'm like, oh my God, I remember this party. <laughs> I went through my freshman year in high school. <laughs> and you're awkwardly like, no one will kind of dance. And then a few people start, but like. When there are so few people dancing, you feel uncomfortable because everyone's looking at everyone dancing. And you almost feel bad for the adults putting on the event. Like yeah. you almost feel bad for them. You're like, they're trying to make this like fun for the kids <laughs> yeah. and it's just a huge flop. 
<laughs> Mrs. Martin is trying to create a vibe and it is not <laughs> happening and she is in the corner crying, devastated. She put hours of work into this. <laughs> and everyone just hates it. It's just... And everyone's like so uncomfortable. There is actually fewer things that are more depressing to me than like a failed event. Yeah, that's a low point. That'll <laughs> that'll haunt you for a while. <laughs> Even just like a casual like a get together at my house. If I'm like, oh, which is why I don't do this because I can't handle the failure of like I used to invite people yeah. over quite a bit, but then all of a sudden like you'd invite a chunk of people and like an hour before it'd be just like a kickback and then an hour before like half of the and then you people can't tell the people out. who are still coming not to come and then it's like three of your friends and they they're not friends with each other and then oh, you're like sitting around the table God. like trying to talk and it was supposed to be like a barbecue like outdoor fire hang oh my god and you know what i can handle that for myself because i'm like i'm a big girl i can handle it but i can't handle the second hand sure. for someone else i just can't like i remember going to a to some sort of like audit dance auditorium event that my grandma took me and my siblings to i must have been like eight and there was like it was an auditorium and there was maybe like a dozen other people there in, oh God. in the audience uh -huh. and your secondhand embarrassment was just <laughs> i was embarrassed for everyone i was embarrassed for i felt horrible for the people putting it on i felt horrible for the guys selling the tickets i felt horrible for my grandma for bringing us there thinking that it was gonna be a great event it was just horrible <laughs> I know you're not an office watcher, but there is an episode of The Office where Michael I've Scott... I've seen most episodes. Okay. The, yeah. Okay. So Michael Scott goes away for like a conference and he's super excited. <laughs> <laughs> he's super excited for this conference because he's like, oh, we're going to rage. Like it's yeah, going to yeah, be a yeah. party afterwards. And he's going around telling everyone like, go to room number 282 after party. And he's telling everybody about an after party in his room. And then they cut to a scene of him and he has gotten black lights for his hotel room and like streamers and like a full bar. And there's lights going everywhere that he brought and he's sitting in the corner by himself. And there's like one person walks in to check it out and he's just sitting alone. Oh, That was the energy. That was the energy. Michael Scott after party mm -hmm. energy. Mm-hmm. Dunder Mifflin conference. I mean, at least they actually had been a performer after, but that, I didn't need to see everyone dance. I was laughing really hard because on your Insta stories, when you hear in the background, Gray say it's very like telling of everyone. Yes. Because I was, when I was watching it, I was very observant of how I'm like, this is actually a way you can really read people is how they dance. And I saw so I was watching everybody is like Thomas kind of like is the guy who like rubs his hands together and oh, like just steps my side God, to and side. He is so that guy. <laughs> He's so that guy. And then Aaron was the one who was actually really giving it. it was like hand on his chest and he's right. like popping right. around yep. and he's like yep. all over. Of course, Demi is on all fours, yeah. like kind of like dry kind humping the twerking, air, kind of not. twerking, but not quite. It was like this all really lines up yeah. with how I've perceived all of you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it made sense. Definitely. And I did feel like I could picture them all in a club in San Diego and what like that energy would really look like. What a nightmare. An actual nightmare. And speaking of San Diego, um, out of nowhere, when um, McKenna, McKenna, Chelsea, Alea, and Alana, who no one knew how to pronounce her name. It was a different pronunciation. It was Elena, it was Alana, it was Alana. Yeah. Uh, every time show up. Alana. Yeah. Alana. I think it's, I think her name is Alana. 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 Okay. Yeah. She said, I think she said Alana, but maybe she doesn't even know. I yeah. don't know. Uh, we don't really get to see any of the other girls, which I was sad not to see more of. Not at all. We saw more of Chelsea later, but not to see more of McKenna and Alea. I really do hope that McKenna they... McKenna did not have her moment. No, and you know this is all that McKenna's been wanting since Pete's season is paradise. And if that's all she got, if they're not bringing her to the beach, can you imagine the Oh my God, that would be so mean if she just doesn't come back on the beach. I mean, and we haven't seen her, right? No. What if that's... that? What if that was it? And she quarantined in Mexico for no other reason. She got a shit party. That would be horrible. Yeah. I would want to just have her on the podcast to talk about that I know. That I'd alone. be like, McKenna, just cry it out, girl. <laughs> cry it out, babe. Let the tears fly, because I'd be bawling. I'd be so pissed. 
they have to let her on but i guess you never know um yeah because we don't see what's her name either alaya no they didn't even come back that night. They, like, brought the other girls on, like, the next day. Uh-huh. That's what I'm saying. It makes me think, like, oh, or did they only bring the girls on that they thought people had a connection with? And it was like, okay, some of the guys were into Chelsea. You shot, and your, you sh- you shot your shot. Yeah. That's that. I mean, I McKenna and Thomas were dancing quite a bit. So yeah. part of me is like, oh, did they not have McKenna come on because they wanted Becca to pursue things with Thomas? And McKenna and Thomas were kind of like having a moment there. Yeah. I don't know. Tammy and Thomas were still having, I did not even think Tammy was still there. I don't, I forgot. I would never forget. But um, yeah, of course, since Becca and well, yeah. What should we talk about first? Should we talk about Chris C and Jacenia and and Alana? Alana? Yes, sure. Yeah, talk about them first. Let's talk about that. Okay. So, I mean, you, Chris C didn't even say any crazy shit. No. Well, okay. So you you knew from uh from last episode I was like we talked about it. I was like I don't know what it is, but I'm just like not a huge fan. Cool I was it. not I was just like I just don't like the energy. Like there's just something. Yeah. So I wasn't surprised if I'm being honest that when as soon as Alana walked in that the swiftness in which this man ran from Jasenia to Alana and just started making out with her. And then when Jasenia <laughs> and then when he saw Jasenia, just kind of this smirk and like, uh-oh, whoopsie. If I was Jasenia, the level of pissed I would have been is huge. And what adds another layer is that Chris and Jasenia were hanging out pre-season. Okay, so here's this is where it's like you you have you wonder the behind the scenes. Yeah. So, Jasenia was hanging out with that San Diego crew. Yeah. And Alana either lives in San Diego and is with that crew, which I believe is the case, or she's with them all the time. So, they were probably in a group together at some point. Yeah. And Chris was there. Yeah. So, this is like a previous thing where they probably were all hanging out and he was maybe flirting with both of them or there was some drama between the two of them or he hung out with Jasenia and then with Alana a different time and then they found out via the friend group. Yeah. But there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on with that, whatever the dynamic is going on, which I'm sure makes it 10 times more painful for Jasenia yeah. because there are layers. This isn't just a yeah. guy who showed up who all of a sudden you're like, you know what? We really connect and I'm really liking him on the beach. It's right. like, no, this is behind the scenes, like maybe previous arguments. A little bit of investment. Yes. And then, she, and it's like, oh, and then that girl walks in and you're like, fuck. Ooh. Yeah, I am just, I was very thrown by that. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. No, you say what you're going to say. I was just going to say, I know I'm kind of cutting ahead here, though. I was so <laughs> tweaked at Chris. <laughs> I was so tweaked at Chris. I sent I sent Becca a message, and I was like, oh, man, I think that this whole Chris thing is going to blow over quick in the episode because there's going to be other drama, but I'm going to make sure to address this because this is bullshit. And then I text you five minutes later. I was like, never mind. I think this is what the whole episode is going to be about. And then I'm like, and then I, and then I, I'm wrapping it going like, I actually feel really bad for Chris. End of day. Okay. Like that was so intense. So that's my whole thing then where I then felt like we were missing big chunks because as much as I was so tweaked at Chris and what he did was like, so disrespectful to Jasenia and the swiftness yeah. of it. And then their little conversation back in the dance, uh, like in the, on the dance floor where then Jasenia is just being a, a God and talking to him like, Hey, like, I mean, what's going on yeah. after seeing him kiss? Yeah. And then uh, Alana walks up and is like standing by him. Like, this is my man. And <laughs> just is like, can I just have one second? Yeah. She's like, well, you've had him like all of paradise. And just if I would have been just I would have flipped a table. And she was just like, just for like one more minute. And then Alana did it once. Then Chris looked at her and was like, just give me a second, babe. So I was so tweaked. <laughs> But the parts that I feel like are missing are like 
Jasenia and Chris knew each other and hung out before. Mm-hmm. Alana and Chris knew each other and mm-hmm. hung out before. Why does everyone assume that Alana and Chris were in an actual relationship before and not that he knew both of them right. and that he's he like had a, maybe a crush on both of them and is like more into Alana? There's, I don't know. There's uh, probably something we're not seeing. Because everyone was like, they're in a relationship. And I was like, I'm not, I don't see hard evidence of this. Like I see of Brendan and Piper. So the other thing that I think is probably really pissing people off is that, um, and adding to the situation is that Chris is making a big ass show of it. Oh, you know, Chris is, yeah. Like they were clowning on him, like, you know, coming down being like, I know that this will upset many of you. (laughs) Favorite part. Of the episode. Favorite I part know, of the episode. I know you might have trouble finishing your breakfast because of the the distraught. You I will am, be so you sick. You will be so distraught and nauseated by what I'm about to tell you. This is going to piss a lot of people off. Hear ye, <laughs> a lot hear of people. Ye. <laughs> this is a tremendous, this is my Trump thing. This is a tremendous loss devastating for all of you tremendous <laughs> that was a dude that was a <laughs> wild move that was a wild move i have to follow my heart <laughs> though it pains me i must <laughs> alana lana whatever your alana. name is <laughs> alana will you go on this date with me Goodbye, everyone. You know, I was I'm, like, Jesus Christ. I must forsake all of your feelings here, for love is on the horizon for me. Alas, I see it. It is blooming. Yeah, it was like, what is happening? Let me not to the marriage of true minds, starts quoting Shakespeare. Love is not love, which alters what it alteration finds. You're like, what the fuck? Who do you think you are? No one gives a shit about you. That's why I was fucking dying when Joe was like, no one cares about these people. (laughs) I was like, okay, I, even that speech coming from, like, let's just say there was the two people on Paradise who were the most famous people were previously in a relationship, (laughs) decide to break up and start dating other people even that would have been a weird move to like stand in front of everyone and been like, I know this will upset many of you, but I must follow my heart. It was just. <laughs> and then I think that pissed people off because like someone said, I don't know if it was Joe or someone else. They were like, it's not going to piss everyone off. It's just going to piss Jasenia off. So like, why are you making this declaration? <laughs> and then Tammy, this episode was killing me with Chris where she just kept going up to him and being like grabbing him and being like don't be an <laughs> idiot go talk to her what are you doing and then when she sees him on the sand earlier and was just like what the hell happened like what's wrong with you what are you doing and I love it because Tammy's part of that like that that friend group yeah. in San Diego so it's like she knows yeah probably Alana and all of them like she knows that whole crew yeah so she's going like it's like if you're with your friends on there and is making some stupid moves and you're like hey please stop what are you doing get back in line like please talk to jesenia like do you realize how you're gonna come Uh, off first of all you're hurting jesenia also remember there are cameras there will be repercussions (laughs) there will be repercussions well there was almost immediate repercussions where by the end of the show they're like we gotta get them off the beach i saw bachelor reality killed me they posted a me (laughs) they posted a me <laughs> I'm gonna pull it off <laughs> because Joe's been wearing that. Um, Joe's been wearing that bandana, you know, the entire uh, the entire season yeah. so far. And Bachelor Bachelor Reality posts this and goes, "Joe's bandana tried to warn us. This is Survivor." <laughs> <laughs> At least for Piper, Brett, and Kristen, a lot of straight up. Oh my God, the buff, the buff. That is so funny. Because God, I would actually love to see the whole cast on Survivor. Now that is a money maker. Now that is a money maker. All of them just full 
naked and afraid style, survivor style, like that would be wild. But Joe did go into full survivor mode because he was the one who was really leading the charge. Um, Get him off the island. He's like, he is not allowed to be here. They were dating before. This is not how it works. Now, I understand the defense for Jasenia because clearly everybody sure. really loves her and they want to stand up for her. Now, on the flip side, Natasha's over here yeah. going, hey, quick cue. Um, why is no one standing up for me and defending me? Which we me? better see it next week, which it looks like we are going to. It's Demi like, brings up the best point she's brought up this season about that. Yes. And I'm like, I think this whole thing is, by the way, ridiculous that they are doing the vote you off the island bullshit about this. Yeah. It's like, hey, if you're going to have a problem with them because you think it's bullshit that they were dating before and especially that they are hurting other people along the way, confront them and be like, you are like, I'm sorry that you are not for me. But this whole vote them off the island thing is like, what is ha- like this? Now, is- granted, it's like I sort of get it in the sense of like, so what? You're here for nothing. You're not here to meet anyone on the beach. So you're going to come on. And then what? You guys are just going to kick it with us for the next like four weeks. Yeah. Get the fuck out. Yeah. No, I'd be. Go have oh, your no. relationship elsewhere. I'd be so pissed. But I'd also be like, gives us something to gossip about. <laughs> right. Give someone a shit talk for the next four weeks. <laughs> because like. I don't know. It's like, okay, they're, they're right. here. It's no. not like, it's not like someone like, obviously they're going to be giving each other roses. So it's not like it's a detriment where someone isn't going to get a rose because of their relationship, I guess, the, if they get kicked off or if they stay there. Yeah. But yeah, Natasha's yeah. Yeah, but, right. Like, Natasha's like, excuse me, is anyone going to stand up for the situation that, that I went through? And especially with, I was again, surprised because it was like Joe and Natasha are like good friends. They do right. clickbait together. I was like, Joe, I, you know, I don't know. It was shocking to me also that Joe was taking the charge more so than Aaron. I was like, okay, Aaron, Aaron 2.0 over <laughs> here. Aaron's rubbing off. <laughs> I was <laughs> that's very true I wasn't thinking about the fact it was like where's Aaron <laughs> where's Aaron in all this where's Aaron sobbing because Becca was on the date with Thomas probably probably I uh, that whole thing yeah that was and then Becca posted like a photo of the two of them today of she and Thomas and I was like is this gonna be a thing yeah I don't know I feel like I've been noticing contestants posting photos even if like they break up with the person yeah like, it's like promo Demi like, posted one of her and Brendan like the first week even though like obviously that lasted for three and a half seconds yeah. but yeah I mean the whole like I just I I was I'll say this I was very tweaked at Chris I was like what is like that is so uncool the way you treated her was so disrespectful. Um, but then the mob. Oh, because it does not compare at all to the Brendan and Tasha situation. No. Not at all. No. I mean, I there I mean, there there are there are similarities in the yes. sense that like, you but know, the you were Brendan with this person. Was talking to but Natasha, the way Brendan was talking to Yes. The which way granted Brendan no spoke. one witnessed. So like the 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 Chrissy thing was very dramatic like they were literally in the room and yeah. then he started making out with Alana like but then the next day remember they were showing they had uh Brendan and Piper and everyone was like look at them they're literally like acting like they've been dating for a year and they're all over each other Ugh. and there's been no conversation with Natasha I'm gonna hold my tongue but they just better come for them with greater fervor I was listening to our king Blake H on yes. his Insta stories. Oh yes, he brought up an interesting point. He brought up a very interesting point. He's like, "Let us not forget." He said, "As much as you know, Brendan and Piper are getting in trubs for the fact that they were talking about uh, their Instagram account." He was saying, just like you were saying, everyone cares about Instagram followers who is on that beach. And he said, "The it's interesting to him." He's like, "There is a hierarchy there." of people who are more famous and have more followers. He said, it's interesting to me because you have like a Brendan who uh, was very beloved on the season and has a lot of followers. And he's like, it's very true that people are, that they will on the beach stay out of someone's way or not maybe want to be the one to cause problems with like a fan favorite, not knowing how it will get edited. So it's a little bit like, oh, I'm not going to go there with that person because who knows how they'll edit it. He said, Versus, it was like they took advantage of the fact that Chris and Alana 
no one knows who they are so it's like yeah get them the fuck out of here yeah no one's gonna no one's gonna give us a hard time about that yeah. because no one knows who they are they're not protective of them at all yeah yeah and i felt bad i mean at the end of it it was like i did feel as much as what chris did was shit it was like oh my god like the the intensity in which they came for him when he walked back on the sand and then with alana too where she was like can i say something and they're like no like you don't even know this person you sh- you haven't spoken two words to her i think what blake said was very on the nose in terms of what's going on here for sure mm-hmm. it's not the way that they treated them was not cool in my opinion no not cool uh, not not fair mm-mm Mm-mm. Support Jasenia. Right. Support her. Love on her. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, well, yeah. Or, or confront Chris and be like, hey, right. what's the right. deal, dude? Like, right. what the fuck? You, you, you're saying these things to Jasenia and then you're going to do this publicly? Right. Alana and Piper were in a similar boat to me where yeah. it's like, you guys haven't even been around. You haven't even seen the connection they have with this other person. Yeah. Confront the dudes. Mm-hmm. Tell them the way they treated this girl was fucked up. Mm-hmm. And honestly, there's not much else you can do. You can't, no. you can't, I mean, what, yeah, what more can you do in that situation? I, mean, the, I do like that the guys are coming now for Natasha Post show, which, you know, that, that does sort of make me think, like, I don't know if they, maybe I'm just making excuses for them, but I'm like, it doesn't seem like they knew the extent of, like, how Brendan treated her. Yeah. Because I think that she probably was second guessing herself. Yeah. And was like, you know, my, I don't know. I just don't know, but. But they better fucking, if they do not comfort Brendan with the same fury, I'm going to be pissed as hell. Yeah. Fucking Brendan. <sighs> but yeah, chill out on Chris and Alana. This, this bullshit's no, stupid. It's just, it's just, you know, it's like they don't even, they are barely on the show. They're still getting their feet wet in this a little bit. They don't yeah. have the experience. Yeah. Joe, chill out. It's like, okay, just, just, just deal with Serena and your Kendall relationship and just, you know, be, be <laughs> support Jasenia and, and I don't know. Um, what was then also happening on yeah. the sand um, was the Thomas and Becca yeah. situation. Um, so Becca's given a rose. New fucking, new fucking news that, uh, that that Aaron's be- got someone to beef with. Yeah, Aaron, with, was, with Aaron was bored. <laughs> Aaron and Thomas are beefing. What's mm-hmm. fucking new? Oh my god. But Becca then says that that's Thomas is kind of the only person that she is interested mm-hmm. aside from Aaron in getting to know. And you know, I thought the conversation how it went down between Becca and Tammy was. I mean, it was so awesome. It was so gracious and, and mature. Yeah, and 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 it was a reminder to me too of like last week when everyone was being shitty and coming for Tammy about pursuing Thomas. It's like this, like Tammy had said off screen. Now her and Aaron had a dynamic where there was an understanding of like, this is bachelor in paradise. And clearly it seems like she's like that with Thomas too, where it's like, obviously she really likes him. She has a huge crush on him and she's devastated that Becca is going out with him and the idea that Thomas might pursue Becca. Um, But it's also when, when, when Becca then pulled her aside and Tammy was just like, I, I like, this is your guys' experience. And, you know, if he, if he comes back to me, then like, that's how it was meant to be. But like, go for it. Like and the fact that she even said to Becca, like, if you want to kiss him, like, do you go do it, do what you feel like you need to do. And I will be your friend. Yeah. And damn it. I believe Tammy. Yeah. But I still felt my heart. Yeah. For sucks. Her. Yeah. It fucking sucks. Who was Aaron? talking to this episode Aaron was on a date with Chelsea okay yes I like already my brain is getting fried I know there's just there's just too much going on Aaron's a charming one I know he's so charming he's a weirdly charming one like with Chelsea I was like 
Okay. I know every time, anytime he talks to uh, a girl that he is interested in or if she's interested in him, I'm always just like, damn, okay, like, game. You know, and I have to say, I don't, I mean, obviously Aaron's coming back, finding out that Becca's with Thomas, but I felt like Chelsea and Aaron had some great I they chemistry. Were I, I was thought like, so too. I was like, this day, by the way, when Chelsea came down looking so <laughs> stunning and everyone was, all the guys were just legs, like, legs, 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 legs yeah. It was just like, she's just the, all beautiful legs. Um, of course. Uh, and Thomas was like, that's good for me, being the skyscraper that I am. I like a girl who's tall. <laughs> Thomas is like, oh, I need no, that. No, that was actually Aaron who said that. Aaron's like, I'm tall, so you know. Aaron's making sure now people yeah. don't forget that he's also tall. I not am just also Thomas. tall. He's like, I don't talk about it like Thomas talks about. It. Remember that, but I am also tall. <laughs> I do hit my head on the ceiling sometimes. Notice that I hit the palapa every time I try to go in. <laughs> Take note. <laughs> but their chemistry, like, she came down, and, and when they went on that date, I was like, I was pleasantly surprised at the chemistry. I was like, I could definitely see this becoming a relationship. That would work better than him, he and Becca, for sure. Now, what I'm hoping for is that because at least it seemed like their date went really well, and they were very cute together, and they had very good, um, like, banter back and forth with each other, very flirty and fun. I'm hoping that that might disseminate the drama between Aaron and Thomas. Like, maybe mm. if Aaron's really liking Chelsea, he it won't be a full combustion, which I'm sure then will be more stressful for Tammy, even though we then see... Aaron with his commentary later about like, well, this is what happens, Tammy. Like, this mm -hmm. is what you deserve. It's just like, dude, just, just no, yeah. no, just enjoy. Just you just went on a nice date. Just soak in the love, yeah. <laughs> soak up the love. Definitely. Um, but Becca and Thomas, uh, they went on their date and okay. <laughs> Something that I would like to note <laughs> is that when Becca asked Thomas, if he'd like to do the date with her, he grabbed her hand and he said, let's do the damn thing. Oh, yeah. We noticed that, too. Okay. Make a fan. <laughs> Make a fan. But when she then was sitting with him having dinner, she's like, well, I don't know if you know anything about like my life or my season. And he goes, no, nothing at all. So two options. Liar. One, lying. He's lying. Two, it was like a producer line that was fed to him. Which is a possibility. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Carl was like, that's Becca K. Let's do the damn thing. That was her quote on the season. Maybe he heard it from somebody else. But he makes you scratch your head a little bit. Where it's like, Thomas okay. Thomas has had some moments before. I would be surprised if he's being a little less than honest yeah, about that I fact. don't care if he's a super fan. God bless. But then when she says. If he's trying to hide it. Exactly. When weird. she says, you know, hey, excuse me. Like, do you know I anything think, about my I don't season? know, though. I think that could possibly be a thing. Yeah, I could definitely. I mean, there was. They had. Uh good chemistry makes you wonder you know he was on brian and mike's podcast yep and so you're sort of like okay are they kind of trying to explain give do a little redemption thing mm -hmm. i wondered that as well it's like why is that the podcast uh-huh interesting uh-huh and becca k and rachel being good friends hmm. interesting i think that, that there's definitely a uh Possibility that a possibility is gonna happen there. Um, I just hope she doesn't get engaged again. If that, if it is, him. yeah, that they're just dating. That it's that just would be date. the third time. Yeah, yeah, no, that would be, and especially then if it doesn't. And it's work not out, a shade to tough. her, but I'm just no. like I, I, me myself. I might be like, you know, it doesn't matter if she wants to get engaged again. That's fine. I shouldn't be judging about it. It would just suck if it didn't work out. And that's what that I'm saying. If it doesn't yeah. work out, and then it's like, oh, okay, the, the, like this. But sucks. you know, no regrets, right? No Who regrets. Cares? Yolo. <laughs> Yolo. Might as well. You only live once. Might as well get engaged a few times. Right? I mean, I would be down to get engaged a hundred times if I kept meeting the right people. Uh, but you know, I uh, they definitely they were they were making out. I thought I was curious if they were going to go to the boom boom room. Because when they were then making out like under the palm trees, like what looked like the wall of the boom boom room, I was like, oh my Lord, are we going to have another boom boom room situation? God, I hate that title so much. I know, I know. It's disgusting. <laughs> I, know, I don't like it either. <laughs> I'm like, just call it the fantasy suite. Yeah. Just call it the fantasy yeah, suite. Yeah, the boom boom room. Yeah, it's just like, okay. Gross. Um, But yeah, we'll see with the two of them. Also, by the way, side note, mm -hmm. uh, Rachel Lindsay came out of oh yeah bachelor conversation the <laughs> retirement rachel Lindsay has not been speaking on the bachelor 
Uh, and when the Monday night episode aired with Natasha, she posted photos in support of Natasha. And also the clip. And then she posted a <laughs> clip of when Brendan was on Bachelor Happy Hour when she was hosting and the dog she was like freaking out in the Brendan. background. Yes, she's never been a fan, apparently. No, she hasn't. I remember people were giving her shit because she was just like, uh, Brendan's not even ready for a relationship or just like really like going off on him. Trust Rachel Lindsay. <laughs> We should never doubt Rachel Lindsay. So when she posted that, especially because she hasn't been talking about Bachelor, I'm like, oh, you know it's real. I believe there are some behind the scenes things going on that we are also not aware of. Like if it looks bad on screen, it's like, okay. And Rachel saying something, okay, okay, okay. Noted. Another thing to note: next week is only one episode, so one BIP episode that airs on Tuesday. So we're going to be continuing our uh, schedule: Tuesday non-batch episodes and uh, Thursday BIP recaps. Um, So, I mean, honestly, I'm excited for just the one episode a week. It's just too much. There's too much going on to try to like really wrap your brain around all of this. I start; it's hard not to tune out on the second episode towards the end. I've been having to rewatch them. Um, and then, oh, the one final thing, promo, Michelle's episode, Michelle's season. I got, love to see it again on my TV. I love to see it again. And now Bachelor ABC has officially released the photo, uh, the promo photo. Ooh, for, I don't think I've seen it. it, just, it but literally I love just the dropped. promo video with the little... Swarovski crystal looking basketball, basketball hoop. hoop. I was like Michelle <laughs> coming down. It was Good. like thank the Lord. In the classroom, ABC. like it is. I love it. This is that. It was an expensive promo that they put some serious they work done that into. Since Hannah Brown. I know, which makes me feel very hopeful in my spirit that this is going to be a great season. And look, this 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 is the promo photo. <gasps> <gasps> it is she so looks stunning. so good. And the tagline for this season is love is in bloom. Okay, what does that mean? But okay. Not 100% sure, but maybe <laughs> she loves flowers. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she was a florist in high school. Not quite sure. In yeah, the I'm promo, surprised they weren't doing some basketball thing. I know. I like, though, that they didn't. Because know, it feels too... too like, like, They're like ball out in love. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> <laughs> or like something about her being a teacher. Yeah, right, I right. thought maybe they do a teacher thing, but I like that love is in session or something like. Oh, well, that's girl. Why aren't you doing this for a profession? <laughs> I that, don't have enough time. But, but I I do like that they're just making it very romantic for her, and it's not kind of like this cheesy like teacher basketball no. like obsession like that they had the basketball moment and the teacher moment, but it was very dramatic and, and like fantastical yes. and like ah, I, so love it. Oh, oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh, me too. <laughs> All right, Rods. Um, chat, chat soon. soon. <laughs>